Hi everyone, my name is Gabby. Welcome to my channel, Nails in Orbit. Today we're going to be doing my left hand. Fun fact, I always have two different things on both my hands. I get bored easy, I have to have two different things. So we're going to be doing a character set on my right hand today. It's going to be Invader Zim, specifically Zim and Gur. But I'm going to take you through the whole process. I'm going to have the acrylic application and then the two characters. So it's going to be a long one today. But if you're not here for the acrylic application, just jump right here and you can go straight to the characters. If you are here for the acrylic application, let's get started. All right, so the first color we're using in this set is going to be from Young Nails Jelly Collection. It's like a glitter jelly, and it's called Cuddle Fruit Jelly. This is like the red one. I figured out that they actually have names, so I got really excited and I literally had to cut the clip. <laughs> but anyway, so here's the next one. This is Jellixer's um, Glitter Acrylic. I like their glitter acrylics, not so much like the actual powders are a little bit patchy from what I've tried and then this one is a loose glitter and it is Cure Sky it's called Iridescent but it's very pretty it's very galaxy moment so I like it a lot and then of course Young Nails Clear I have a big container of Young Nails Clear so I just use this little small container and this is a little sneak peek a little sneak peek but it looks better on the nail <laughs> anyway we're gonna start prepping so this is just me putting alcohol on the nail and then I'm going to wipe it clean with this paper towel. I usually use a brush, like a nail brush, but I was too lazy to um, sanitize it. <laughs> so we're gonna use paper today. And then now I'm dehydrating with Mia's Secret. I do this twice and then I do the primer twice. I don't know why, because I just use the acrylic, but I like to do the most, get them oils off, make sure it stays, especially on my clients. Sometimes on myself, I, I slack a little bit on my clients. We go extra, we go ham <laughs> to make sure it stays. But anyway, now here's the primer. This one is the Young Nails Primer. I stand behind this one completely. I tried the Mia Secret one, that was totally fine. But for me, um, I think I just liked the, the in compa like comparing them, I like the Young Nails better. All right, let's see what's next, guys. Hurry up, Gabby. We do two layers of this, of course. I do two layers of this even when I do gel polish because it just it holds on tight i saw a trailer from young nails to say just put it on the tip but no put it on that whole nail your client's gel polish will never come off believe me believe me i also do two base coats but you know that's besides the point that's for gel Don't ignore that okay anyway we're back to the acrylics so now i'm putting the acrylics out i'm lining them all up i'm doing this because it's gonna be like a galaxy like a marble moment so that's why i'm doing it like this and then I got them all lined up. Hurry up, Gabby. Hurry up. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm taking clear, grabbing a little bit of glitter, grabbing, and just, just those two on the left. So that's what we're doing because the red won't be used for the base because it'll like ombre into it. But yeah, no. So this is all we're going to do. Just marble this in. It's not going to be like a perfect, you can see it marble like if you were to use just regular plain colors, but... It looks beautiful and I love it. So you guys can go ahead and just watch that. Oh, actually, actually, I'm going to explain why I chose these colors. So I went with these colors because I looked in the background of the show and I'll pop some pictures up here so you guys can see. I looked in the, oh, I just spelled that. Anyway, I looked in the background of the show and I saw a lot of like beautiful purples and like magentas and all that stuff. And I wanted to like kind of recreate the sky in the background of the show and that's kind of like how I like to get the background sometimes if I if the background's cool enough in the show so that's what we're doing here and I chose the tips because of the angles of the characters if you look at the characters everyone is super angular super just sharp so I thought lipstick would be a really fun shape to do and I've never done lipstick on myself or on anybody else and I love it it's one of my new favorite shapes so amazing you guys can watch the rest <laughs>
Okay, now we're onto the base. This is where we use that cuddle fruit jelly from Young Nails. Sometimes I like to just start on the ring finger because it's a bigger finger. It's just easier. Then you get the hang of it, then I move on to the pinky. But anyway, you take the color, put it on the base, and just wipe it up, basically. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, keep it thin. Keep it thin because we still have to create the whole um, top coat, like the whole structure with the with clear. So yeah, keep it thin, but just apply how you like it. Like here, I thought that the ombre started too low. So I tried to add more so that the ombre was a little bit higher. So yeah, watch the rest, you guys. Right, it's clear cap in time. So you just take that clear and this is where all your structure is. So just do it like how you'd regularly do your nails to get the strength that you need. So first I start and I give like an even layer on the free edge of the nail. And then my apex bead goes right here. Just swipe that up as well. And then push it back a little bit. Make it a little smooth right there so it's not so harsh. Just try to get it as smooth as possible, of course. So the more smooth, the less filing. So whatever you need to do. Keep checking it. You check it from the sides. From when you're like looking at it down, like looking down at your eyeball. So you make sure that there's not too much um, heaviness on the sides. All right. And I do this again, another apex sort of bead, I guess. I can't always, I don't always do it in three beads. So if you take it more than three beads, don't get mad at yourself. Oh my goodness. She texted me again. I literally texted my sister. You messed up my recording and she did it again. Are we surprised? Cause I'm not. Okay. Anyway, now we're filing. <laughs> now we're filing and yeah, just keep it. 
I feel like I'm not a great teacher when it comes <laughs> to this type of stuff. But anyway, just file, get it smooth. Yeah, get it to your liking. When I do them on myself, I actually file with the hand file a lot. And I don't use the e-file as much, except just for my cuticle and stuff. But you guys are just going to see this one now, basically. Because um, this is already a long video. So anyway, then I take this bit. I like I like doing the cuticle with this bit. I don't know. I, the 5-in-1, 4-in-1, 5-in-1? I think it's 5-in-1. That one's good, too. I just like this bit for some reason. Just this natural bit. You can get real close. Doesn't hurt anybody. So that's what I usually do. I usually shape it and then smooth the whole nail with this bit. That's how my friend taught me when I was in nail school. That was her hack. So I've stuck by it. But if you have more bulk on the nail, obviously, do the hand file and then do and that bit. I have that bit right there. Yeah, that's what I, then you just take any chunks off and then use that natural bit. And then, oh, there's a sneak peek. There's a sneak peek. <laughs> okay, what's next? Gabby, what's next? Oh, yep. Then I just sprayed it with alcohol, wiped it down. Again, I would usually do this with a brush, but again, I did not want to disinfect the brush because I'm lazy. So here we are. And what's next? Oh, then I just top coat. I top coat before characters. Um, I just think it's easier. Some people, I think, just smooth out. Most people, I think, just smooth out the nail and then do the character. But I do the top coat, do the character, and then I always do to do top coats at the end, which you guys will see. But I have never had any problem with that. And I always have character sets on my nails. So, and I do them on people. So, I've never had a problem with that. So, you guys can go ahead and watch that real quick. <laughs> Right, it's character time. So here I'm showing you Nails by Dev Shop. Um, this is her liner gels, which are amazing for characters. Highly recommend. You guys will see me use that towards the end. And then I'm using D&D to make the character's body. So we're just going to go through all the color mixing right now. And you guys can just watch that with me if you want. Um, so first I use that lighter green color. And then I mix it with this limey color. Because as you can see, they just have like a little bit more of a limey. It's like not quite as pale as that green color, but I'll keep the picture up so you guys can see which color I'm making at a time. And then, so that's the main body color. I didn't think it was dark enough, so I added some more of that lime green. I need to pull up this picture for myself. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Okay. And then I usually like go like off screen. You can see me putting the daughter tool. I'm just putting that over the picture. So if it's like over the picture, anyway, I'm creating like the shadow, the shadows. I don't have, Nails by Def has an awesome like, like it's like clear mixed with black. So it's really makes shadows easier for characters, but I don't have that one yet. But anyway, so I just made a darker green for the shadow. And then this is for like the eyeballs and the body on Zim. So that's Tropicana. I love this color, but I didn't think it, it was like a little bit too bright. So you can see I added a darker red or I added a red to it. I added this D and D red. So yep. Keep mixing. You want to mix with like other colors, like try to see the color and see, oh, it looks like it needs a little bit more red. Like, um, not just like black or white because that just makes it like lighter or darker or can make it like a little bit muddy. But if you mix with other colors, then that's ideal in my opinion. And then this color is for like his arms and collar area. And that one's pretty close. So I just kept it. And then the purple, that one, I put a little bit too much purple, but it's fine. <laughs> so that one's for the tongue. We're trying to make that like darker, what is this mauve? Darker mauve color, I guess. But I put a little bit too much purple. So you're going to see me kind of messing with it a bit. But characters are good because you can be like a little bit off and people are not going to notice. Like they don't have a picture of Zim, you know, when they're looking at your nails. So people are going to be like, oh my God, it looks exact. Even if you're like a little bit off. So don't worry too much on it. Just get as close as you can. 
and you can mix a lot of colors. You don't need like every single color out there. You can mix a lot of them, so. And then what's the next color, Gabby? What's the next color? All right, see, I added a little bit of red to that one, like a darker red. And you know, we get close enough. <laughs> All right, hurry up, girl. Give up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, that's the next one. So this one we're making the tongue on Gur. Because it's not quite the exact pink that we already have right there. I probably could have used it, but <laughs> I just wanted to make a slightly different one. Since it's like one of two colors on Gur. <laughs> so anyway, we mix that to match it as close as possible to Gur. It's time to draw the characters. I'm going to walk you guys through this to the best of my ability, but I'm also going to keep the picture up so you guys can see kind of what I'm doing. So first we're starting with Gur, and basically I just look at each character as if, like I'm just looking at the shape, you know, like as if the character is just all these little shapes. And that's just kind of how I see it. And then I first start out by just doing like, I go color by color. So now we're doing the light green, so like the full body of color. And this kind of like shapes the character out. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point because you're going to be doing a liner. So if things need to be sharper, you can always just go back and do that with the liner, especially since they have such like a thick border. So there's a lot of forgiveness in there. And I am using my little tiny daughter tool. Sometimes I think this is easier than a brush, but I kind of go back and forth. You'll see me go back and forth depending on what I'm doing. But this feels more like a pencil if you're used to drawing with a pencil. And then, yeah, of course, like I said, I'm switching back and forth. But for the mouth, it was like a little sharper. So you guys will just see me going through each color, viewing everything as a shape. And again, you're, you, can be, you can be slightly off because people, again, are not going to be comparing the picture to your nail. So just do the best you can. Practice a lot and you'll get better and better. But I'll let you guys um, finish watching this and I'll pop in randomly. <laughs>
here you're about to see me throw on the eyeball. And I'm going to try to explain how I do the placement of other features on them. So just look, like really pay attention to like how much of the right side of the eyeball is like hanging off his head or is it centered or does it look like an egg? Is it an oval? Is it, is it a circle? Like just pay attention to those little tiny details and then you'll see where I place the other eyeball. I just look like, I'm like, okay, that's going to be the center of the head. And then I'm like, okay, let me think where I'm going to put the eyeball here. And you just like, think about it for a sec. If you get it wrong, you can always just take it off. But see, you can kind of just see like, oh, that's where it started. And that's where it needs to end. This is a kind of a really hard thing to explain, <laughs> but you get better as you keep practicing and stuff like that. this point I'm using this brush I have I'm pretty sure it's 
11 millimeters. Yeah, I got it at my local nail store, but Nails by Dev does have one that's perfect. It's a nine millimeter. I really like that one. Um, I just, it hadn't arrived yet, so I was still using this one. But anyway, so I just take my little brush, go into the potted gel. Sometimes I'll put my brush in the potted gel and then just swipe it on the edge a little bit so that I don't have too much on my brush, but it doesn't like pool too much or anything. Like if you were trying to do this with like a, just like a regular D and D nail polish, it pools at the end and it makes it hard to keep the lines the same thickness. And that's why these potted gels are good because they're thicker. But anyway, so you just follow along the line and I just look at the picture, see like the line variation. Cause some cartoons have like skinnier lines here and thicker lines here, but yeah, if you just follow along the body, this is where you can make it sharp. Um, the advice I would give is be confident in your lines. Like sometimes I go over the lines a lot and then it kind of like messes it up. But um, if you can, it just takes practice, but just be confident with the lines and then that's when it will be straight, straighter. But yeah, here you can see that I'm putting the black line more inside of that green line because I made it too thick right there. If you compare that spot to the picture, it's a little bit thick. So I added the black line a little bit inside and then I'm just gonna fill it up to the green line. And then it just looks like a, like a thicker outline, but that the green part isn't as thick.
right. So we're on to a curve. Curves are really hard, but you know, just like I said, and the more practice, the better that you get. I'm still trying to get my curves perfect and keep the line weight the same all the way around. So that's really challenging. As you can see, I'm, it's not like perfect here, but um, yeah, you just keep trying. You try to go around with it um, and use like a good brush length. That's probably the biggest thing. If you're using too short of a brush, it's really hard to get the curves the way that you want them. But I think like between a nine and 11, is like the perfect length to do um like a circle. So I recommend doing that. And you know, practice makes progress. So just keep practicing. Okay, so coming up in a second, you're going to see that it just like jumps to the end and all of his line work is done. I'm so sorry. My phone like messed up or like it was too full and stopped recording. So I apologize, but you'll get the whole Zim with no mistakes. So we'll go ahead and we'll start Zim. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So here you can see that I'm trying to explain why I'm choosing that middle length. I just like how those two middle fingers like look lined up together. So we're going to put Zim right next to him. Oh, I never explained why I chose these pictures. So these two pictures um, are, they're both screaming. So I thought it was hilarious. So I just wanted them both yelling. So that's why I chose them. But anyway, I'm doing it right next to him. Um, and I thought it looked good just cause those two nails lined up. So let's get, let's get a cracking. So again, I start the same way as I did with Gur. I just start with the green part, start shaping out the body, looking at the body as if it was just different shapes and putting those shapes together. And if I, like I'm doing here, if I have a mistake, I just wipe it off and then put it back on. So we'll start with green and then we'll move on.
Now we're moving on to his clothes. And we're going to this little triangle dress moment that he has on. And then I just shape that out. And then you'll see I move on to his eyes afterwards because it's the same color, just easier that way. Now it's eyeball time and you'll see how I place the eyeball. Like there's start, there's finish. And then I put two more dots for, so I connect those like that and then put a little X. So this can also be a technique to help you like just place, thing, place things. And then I just connect it like that with my daughter tool. So that's another way. And then you just keep messing with it until it's perfect or you feel it's perfect. Perfect for you, it doesn't have to be perfect, but <laughs> perfect enough. It's collar and arm time. So again, these are just shapes. These characters are easier because they have so many angles, so that's good. Um, but yeah, so this collar, for example, this is just a triangle. Just think of it as an easy peasy little triangle. And then when we move on to the arms, again, it's just a triangle, a long triangle. And then see, I just pull it up. Oh, we're still doing the, oh, there we go. See the arm? And then you just pull it up as a triangle, lots of straight lines. So that's really nice. But shapes, 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 don't forget.
not jump in for the teeth because these are a little crazy. <laughs> so you can't really see the tongue right now, but anyway, we'll just, this is how I do the teeth. Like if I have teeth or something like that's like this, I just do little tiny dots and then kind of like pull them up and then connect them. So you're not just drawing everything individually. It kind of creates like a faster system, but you can see I'm like connect, connect, connect. And that's just a little bit easier way to do it. And instead of going like tooth by tooth, you go dot, 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 connect them all. outlining now so just the same as like I said for Gur, just dip that brush in that potted gel um keep your lines even confident strokes rotate your hand if you can make it a little easier on yourself on your clients you won't be able to rotate your hand as much so <laughs> their hand as much but if it's on your own hand take advantage of that the line work is what really brings it to life so that's really fun it's fun to watch this part because you really have to trust the process. Sometimes you can think it's looking crazy, but as soon as you put the line work in there, it's all good. Brings it to life.
we're going to shade them up now. So we take that dark green, put it wherever um, the drawing that we have shows us that we need to put it. You can't really see it that distinctively in this video, but that's okay. It's there. <laughs> but yeah, just lay it where you need to. I love when they're shading on characters. It just makes them look just a little extra oomph. So throw it in there. And here we're just basking in it before we put that top coat in. I like to see all the little textures in there. So that's all I'm showing you guys, but oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now it's time for that top coat. I always put two top coats. Like I said, it looks like I already put one top coat. So I'm just showing you guys the second one, but two top coats. It keeps them on there strong. Just wipe the edges so you don't, your nails don't get bulky, but there it is. And now I just want to thank you guys for watching my very first video. I had so much fun filming, learning how to edit, doing the whole shebang. So I hope you guys like it and look forward to seeing another video soon. Bye guys.